the tallest man on radio, right? Uh, WKLO 69 to 71. Uh, <laughs> Johnny kind of, well, I went through the Wigglesworth and the Bill Hennis days. I was right in the middle. He talked about going from apples to oranges. And, uh, you know, we, we all kind of disappeared one at a time there when Hennis showed up. So, we, I, I, one of the things I remember once is doing, I, I did a lot of night shows, a lot of overnight shows. And we were, you know, from a very personality oriented back in the, the, the initial KLO days. And then we went to the, you know, the, the, the boss radio, boogie, 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 and all that stuff. And it just wasn't us. So I get off the air and I go over there and sit behind the window over at Blackie. Uh, Blackie Bailey was in there. And he, what are you doing over here, boy? You know? <laughs> and Hennis would drive by, you know, and uh, make sure we weren't over there. But we were <laughs> <waiting there. laughs> So as big went down, I ended up down with Wigglesworth the second time. And then uh, he decided it's time to do a program director thing. So I hooked up with Johnny. Johnny was our consultant of the little town called Hamilton, which is out of Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. And uh, it's, the best, it's the best consulting job Johnny ever did, because we had, actually had our act together. Johnny came up just collect the checks and he do a real good job. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in television now for 31 years, but not on the air. I told him I won't do two things. Believe it or not, I won't climb the tower. <laughs> and I won't go on the air. Um, and so far, so good. So, I uh, thank Johnny for his consultant efforts and being a buddy for all these years and, uh, you know, all KLO folks that are here and, you know, it, it really is one big happy family down deep. And I, you know, as we have these reunions, it becomes more and more apparent. I'll tell you one, one quick story here with Mason. Mason was over on KLO, I was on Wacky, and I forget who the guy was on when. But we decided one night we were going to pull something. And you, you can just imagine at 2 in the morning who's out there listening. So I said, I forget what makes the thought of it but we both agreed we got the guy who went on the horn. He said, on the count of three, we're all going to play the same way. Ready? One, two, three, boom. And we got some buddies, you know, it's some horrible record. I mean, something that just had to hurt. So you know there's somebody out there going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry No, we never, he never told Johnny, I never told Will and Harry, but we had laughed about that, and it's a true story. But, you know, you can't do that nowadays, but boy, you sure could then, and that was the fun part of that, doing the radio back in those days. So, I'm going to go back and uh, pretend I'm a tower again. Thanks. I'm Gary Major. Came to Louisville in 1973 because when I called John Randolph, he said, No, but KLO Scott, I don't think you had just hired Kyle Lee. And that day that you hired Kyle Lee, he said, No, Robin Walker has an opening at WKLO. I came in as a nighttime job, became assistant program director, music director, yada, yada, yada. Was a program director that shut it down, or should I say it was shut down on me when. Um, John Page Audington and Sunuru played in in 1979. Uh, John Perryman later later came back to Great Trails property at KJ100 and was a general manager when uh, I came back in second uh, incarnation. Um, but you know, I think uh, also when Bill Bailey was in Chicago and Johnny was looking for a morning man and I applied <coughs> then. And he said, I'm okay, sir, tell me about what Bailey was doing. And I was here in Dallas in Chicago, and he was not happy in Chicago. Because he could he was he had no latitude whatsoever to do anything. And I told John, and I, I still have a letter someplace in the archives. Bob was sending me a very nice rejection letter twice. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> we have a, a table, we have some sales folks here that I work with in, in later years. Chocolate guy sitting right here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you will take him next. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> from, from being on the air, what did you pull? Stunt, you, I played probably working in the showcase studio window, which is always fun. Anybody who's worked in one knows this, that you get flashed and mooned. <laughs> you see exciting things like cows running down the street from escaping in the stockyard. You know, you know it, it really is, if, if you are people watching, you know, there are a lot of people who didn't like working in the studio, because every time somebody went by, they'd clench, um, 
I had the, the busing situation. My goal wants you the busing situation. And I was sitting on the air, and it was, on, I think, Wednesday was the day that they, they did the march on uh, River City Mall. And I had a riot squad bus pull up across the street from the radio station where the bar used to be, but right there in that, that parking lot area. And fully riot police got out of the bus and it's like, you know, this is like Chicago in 68. Please tell me they requested war by Edwin Hubbard. Yeah, they just, kept, they just kept right on going down, straight down to the mall. And that was, that was a scary time, too. Okay, thank you. Terry Major, ladies and gentlemen, something. Thank you for letting me break it up a little bit. There were no cell phones back in those days. Okay, so what they didn't think about is during this monstrous sale, Gary might have to go to the bathroom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in any case, without a cell phone and no communication, some kid was heard saying, Mommy, I think he's talking. I think he's talking to it. So in any case, he was yelling that he needed to go to the bathroom. And the bottom line is, the crane operator left. Left. <laughs> he left. The sales rep, who was the brain shot brain behind this whole deal, left. And Gary was left out there screaming in a panic to get down off of that car, uh, crane and to let him down. You don't even have to tell him. The story that I brought is uh, I had joined WAKY before uh, Bailey did. Then I left, went to another station for a while, and then Chuck Leggett quit wacky and went to Q, QHI, I-95. And Bob Rice called me on the phone because I just started at XV as uh, general manager. Said I got a sales opening. So I went into Charlie and I said, guess what? You're general manager again. I'm going back to Wagner. <laughs> so I got to know Bailey. Bailey says, I'm going to make you the second best known personality in Louisville. But what he didn't tell me, he was going to call me Baby Huey. <laughs> I was well known, all right. Can you imagine walking in, trying to look like a spitty salesman, knows his stuff, and people say, you're Baby Huey? <laughs> he was right. I was well known and everything else, and after a while they would take me seriously. But um, is Biggs Tattler here tonight? No, he couldn't make it. Okay, good. I can talk about Biggs. Biggs came over to Wacky, and he made a comment one day. One day. He says, yeah, he might be the uh, second best known, but can you imagine buying anything from a guy named Baby Huey? <laughs> but uh, the, Duke, the Duke and I had a close personal relationship. Um, I was his best man at his third wedding. <laughs> I was the best man at the third wedding. He married the girl that he met up in Chicago. They came by. I got a picture of, Ronnie. of the four of us there sitting out at the, the restaurant there at the airport. We drank for four hours. We finally had dinner in half an hour, and he said, well, I got to leave. But anyway, um, Bill was one of the best friends I ever had, and I saw him a couple of years ago. Uh, when he, and he was in the nursing home. And we spent about uh, three and a half, four hours together that day talking about old times and everything. And he says, would you do me a favor and would you wheel me down? i got to make the uh, announcement for dinner. <laughs> I said, the announcement for dinner? He says, yeah, I'm the announcer for the nursing home. <laughs> so I'm wheeling him down and he's, he's saying to all of the residents, he says, this is Baby Huey wheeling me down. <laughs> <laughs> but the Duke got there and he sounded just as professional as he ever did reading off the menu. I never heard a menu read so well in my life as I did from the Duke. And that's my school. This is one of those things where I met my wife at the radio station and we've never been apart. You may be the only couple to pull that off. You know? <laughs> I think they both know too much on each other. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich and Angie get on the phone. Oh, I, I
didn't meet my wife at Wacky. I had too much class for that. <laughs> Actually, Wiki, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I got the distinction of being actually the youngest guy around who uh, worked in the original Kentucky Home Life Building Studios, Wacky. Uh, 1960. Tom Herman's the youngest guy. Okay, he's younger than I am. That's right. But I originally started out as the engineer, thanks to Ben Flutter. Where is Ben? Ben Allen Flutter. Uh, doing the uh, engineering work for Tim Tyler's remotes at Stewart's Department Store on Saturday mornings. You guys remember those things? And Randolph, I didn't uh, I didn't realize you were a consultant. Uh, you may be my favorite consultant now. You used to be my, my favorite consultant was Graham Richards. Do you all remember Graham Richards? And what were the, what were the classics? Pick up and pick up and tell a book a look -a. Do you remember tell a book a look -a? The, Some classic uh, classic wacky uh, uh, contest under a, 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 a consultant we brought in that lasted about six months, I think. Maybe one book. And that was about as uh, long as uh, Graham Richards lasted. I, I had the, uh, the distinction of being Weird Beard's newsman. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, and also his counselor while uh, Graham Richards was there. So, so I'll never forget, I was reading a newscast one night, and all of a sudden the news copy burst into flames. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm still trying to go on. I had a reputation for not being able to be broken up. The guys used to do some weird stuff and bring in naked women, strippers and all. And they tried to break you up and it never, never worked. Well, this worked when uh, Byron Crawford took a zip of the lighter and set fire to my newscast. And then, <laughs> then took the fire extinguisher out of the hallway and came in to put it out. That was the end of so, we, we had a lot of good times and a lot of them we don't want to talk about. So. <laughs> I really can't add a lot. I, I just had the honor of being with uh, WKLO and right at the end. I worked with Gary. This whole table. This whole table. Yeah, yeah, all all table. Yeah. And um, Rich actually kind of got me into the news business. Uh, I, I used to be a dental hygienist, so <laughs> natural uh, connection there. Sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah. still, Gary. <laughs> There. Like that. But uh, I really felt honored to, to say I had a little bit of time there at WKLO. That was really, really special. Right at the end, too. Right at the end. Yeah. And then uh, I, we decided to start our family, so I knew I couldn't stay in the radio business. Like the weird times and everything else. And so uh, I left and got into public relations. That's the go. Yeah. Thanks, guys.